Unemployment is down and markets are up. It's a topsy-turvy world. There's some strange things going on. Not only that, but Russia just claimed the title of the second most powerful Bitcoin miner in operation. So crazy times. And this is what I'm talking about. There was a report released today. It looks like the unemployment rate slipped down to 3.5%. Now the Fed, of course, we know they want it to actually go up so they can squash demand and crush everybody's dreams and hopes. But it didn't happen like that today. And uh, that's what the market wanted to see. They wanted to see unemployment rates also uh, rise. That didn't happen. So you would think that uh, there'd be a little bit of a, of a lag, but no. In actuality, March labor report comes out and shows a very resilient economy. It talks about 3.5 from 3.6. Average hourly earnings increased 4.2% on a 12-month basis. So what do the markets do? Well, they said this is great news. It's a funny thing. It seems like the news that we would expect things to drop do the exact opposite. That's why it's very difficult to time these markets. I'll just take a look at NASDAQ, even better. And crypto, eh, not too good. Actually, we've uh, slipped down negative 0.4%. I think one of the biggest droppers with Dogecoin as Elon Musk changes the logo from the Doge back to the bird. So this is what we have going on. I tweeted this out and uh, there was a comment from Shark Puncher. He had a good point. He says, you know, more jobs mean nothing, in my opinion. What good is a job if 100% you take home pay, can't even pay a mortgage, let alone food, transportation, et cetera. That's the reality for most Americans. 80 hours a week still won't cover rents in the jobs location. I had to think about that, and I've heard the same complaints uh, quite a bit. So I started to think about, well, maybe there's not just the jobs and unemployment. What about underemployment? This is from uh, BLS.gov, labor underutilization. And just so we know, uh, the definition of unemployment per America, jobless persons who are available to take a job and have actively sought work in the past four weeks. But if we take a look at the state-by-state -state case as far as underutilization, they break it down even further for underutilized. So you one persons employed 15 weeks or longer as a percent of the civilian labor force. But I just want to jump down to U6, which is total unemployed plus all marginally attached workers, plus total employed part-time for economic reasons as a percent of the civilian labor force, plus all marginally attached workers. Now, I took a look at that. That would be like a little bit underutilized or, or, or underemployed. You can find this on the FRED uh, economic data, and I linked this in the description. Same thing, total unemployed, all persons marginally attached labor force. Now, if we can see here, this goes back back to nine, January 1994. And if we take that for the unemployment rate and just go back to January, roughly 1994, which would be somewhere around here, and we increase that, we can take a look that it kind of follows the exact same pattern as far as underutilization. Same type of thing. But that got me thinking even further. Well, if we're taking a look at unemployment, but what about hourly earnings? How are we doing in that department? Well, we're actually going up. It looks like a big hockey stick here in America. Average hourly earnings were, gosh, look at this, 2015, $24.89. And now, as of March 2023, $33.18. That's pretty good, right? Eh, wait. Personal consumption expenditures is also going up. So you're making more money. Unfortunately, you got to buy more stuff that costs more. And we're at an all-time high. And that's just the personal consumption expenditures. Now let's just strip that out as far as energy and food because that's a little bit too volatile. The state's right here. And that's even more of a hockey stick. So Shark Puncher may be right. And you can tell me in the comments section what, uh, what you see but uh, I've seen a lot of uh, prices uh, go up. They've reduced a little bit. One of the big things that we can see also is uh, everything that's going on in the housing market and then also for the automobile industry, which if you're going to look into a recession, it kind of leads you in and leads you out. So that's what I see. And lastly, I will just say this. Everybody's talking about potentially, look, it's going to be a hard landing. It's going to be a soft landing. It's going to be a no landing. Other people are saying, you know what? No, I think it's going to be stagflation. Or we're going to see economic growth slow. Inflation is going to increase. Unemployment is going to increase. Like in the 70s, who knows? I got to tell you, I don't know where, where things are going. I don't think anybody really has a crystal ball. I'm just, pretty, just guessing here. But for me, if I just stay in the game, longevity usually works. And that's not financial advice. It's the things that I am doing. However, I will say this. It is interesting 
about all the things that are going on, things that are going up, to take a look what's going on globally. And this caught my attention. Russia becomes the second most powerful Bitcoin miner in the world. So I'm trying to see like what are a pretty good investments and what is more bang for my buck. I got to tell you, it seems like a lot of people may be picking this. So Russia is generating one gigawatt mining power during the first quarter of 2023. Russia claimed Kazakhstan's place is the second largest mining power. And I'm not going to go through this whole thing. But what is interesting to me is that the U.S. remained in its position as the leading country with the most significant mining power as it generates three to four gigawatts of mining capacity. So I started to think to myself, maybe it's just sensationalism that we're looking at because we always hear about how the government hates Bitcoin, how these senators and these congressmen and women, they hate Bitcoin. But then the free market comes out and says, you know what? Uh, we're going to mine Bitcoin and we're going to be you know, the largest one here in the United States. Uh, we're going to be the biggest, largest Bitcoin mining operation. Russia didn't really want it to, too much. And what do they become? The second largest Bitcoin mining operation. So I know when people say like, well, Bitcoin might not last or crypto might not last. I think we're here to stay. And what it really comes down to is the people that want it. So when I see these things, I'm like, this is a positive sign. And also, it just takes a long time to, to move forward. And what I'm talking about is that uh, we're talking about Russia. And of course, Russia, the government isn't mining Bitcoin. I mean, they may be in the, in, uh, but not really uh, making that a, a full press release. But it is interesting that it's the second largest Bitcoin mining operation. And for over two, three years, this is a, an article from August 12, 2020, Russia was ditching the dollar for bulk of its exports to China. Things take a long time to get really moving from the old way. Russia dropping the US dollar for Chinese yuan. This is in December, 2022. And then we can see here, April 3rd, Chinese yuan replaces the dollar as the most traded currency in Russia. So I don't know if, if this has any relevance or bearing, but I gotta tell you, it's interesting how they're getting rid of the dollar they're mining Bitcoin, and who knows if it's the government or not. I, would, would, I can't say what it is, but it's just interesting how things are moving in this direction and things are changing quite rapidly. Anyhow, let me know what you think about those two stories in the comment section. Maybe I'm way off, but I see it a different way. And lastly, to talk about things that really people don't like to talk about, tax time. So tax season here in the U.S. is upon us. We're looking at April 18th. This is a story, actually this is an old story. IRS is hiring additional 20,000 new staffers over the next two years with 80 billion in new funding. Look, they're not gonna hire them today, but they're gonna phase those guys in. Why? Because eh, they like to do audits and that's just what it is. Now, there was a uh, email that was sent out, just so you know, CoinLedger, now they have Cardano and XRP blockchains, which you can integrate in their API integration. And on top of that, they're looking to roll out a service uh, similar to what they did with NFTs, which they were buying people's NFTs, not them themselves, uh, a third party. And they're saying, hey, would you like to roll out a service similar to the NFT loss harvester that buys your e-liquid worthless rug pulled fungible tokens for a small amount so you can realize the loss of your taxes? These are just something that uh, we're thinking about. I personally have used uh, CoinLedger for, oof, for two years now and it works out pretty well. But uh, there's a link in the description and you get 20% uh, off if you'd like to use CoinLedger for your taxes. And also, if you're looking for uh, the last video that we did with CoinLedger, I'll link that in the description. One of the big takeaways I got from that one was to uh, do an extension for your taxes because who knows what's gonna happen. Anyhow, that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. My thing to talk about are time sensitive. Crypto and digital assets investing is not a set it and forget it type of thing. So it may behoove you to keep informed. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.